Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well and you've had a lovely Easter weekend um, and I hope everybody is staying at home and they're staying safe. So in today's video, I have been wanting to do a bit of a sit down video for a long time. I feel like I've just been vlogging or doing a lot of fashion stuff. So I really just wanted to sit down and chat basically. Um, so as you can see from today's title of the video, um, I'm going to be talking all about body image and body confidence and how I went from being a very insecure amputee um, to a very confident one today. So for those that don't know me, well my name is Sean, um, I have been an amputee for about six years now and I am an amputee that proudly shows their amputation as you can see. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd sit down and just have a little bit of a chat really. <laughs> I think this video has come at the right time as well because I can imagine everybody is at home, everybody is re-evaluating what means the most to them and I think we're all obviously we're all feeling it this situation has affected every single person around the world I don't think there's anybody gone unaffected by anything so um yeah, I just thought that sitting down and maybe doing this might give somebody a little bit of confidence that they need. Um, maybe someone's trying to make a complete lifestyle change and they might need an extra boost. So I'm hoping that this video can help. Um, so yeah, let's just get straight into it. So like I said, I um, became an amputee when I was 24, so which was six years ago. Um, for those that don't really know my backstory, I'll just briefly go over it just really 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 briefly because um we'll be here all day <laughs> well all day I'm filming this at night so we'll be I'll be here all night <laughs> um so I um unfortunately got hit by a taxi when I was in New York um in August of 2013 I um was hit by a taxi when I was actually walking on the pavement with my best friend it was the first day of a holiday so you can imagine um we were obviously devastated by what was happening <clears throat> excuse me um yeah so you can imagine we were obviously devastated by what was happening and I unfortunately lost my leg due to that so um my leg was severed off at the scene I then spent six weeks in the Bellevue hospital in New York City um where I underwent four surgeries and able um for them to put my I don't say stump, <laughs> hate it, um, my amputated leg, let's just say, um, in a shape where I could even wear a prosthetic. So I was very, very lucky, well, not only to wear a prosthetic, but to be alive. So I'm extremely grateful for everybody that helped me, not only at the scene, but the surgeon. Um, he obviously knew I was a very young girl who, um, needed <laughs> needed my leg not only that but my knee my knee was very important for them to try and keep um because it's it's a lot easier when you do have your knee being an amputee you have that joint so it's much more easier for you to walk um obviously in my case I can't speak for everybody's case but um you know I still have sores now and again especially when the weather changes um but yeah so that's my little backstory so another part of that not only was I quite a young woman um I was actually studying fashion at the time I'd just finished my first year of fashion buying with design which I then graduated um and got a degree in but yeah so you can imagine it was really really hard I worked in retail I um I was at university so you can imagine the types of people I was surrounded by <clears throat> sorry excuse me yes yeah, so you can imagine the types of people that I was surrounded by very very beautiful people um, and all had the same kind of passion for what we were doing and I thoroughly thoroughly can honestly say that it was the best time of my life I, I just sorry about that I didn't mean to get emotional <laughs> um but anyway for me to kind of be forced out of 
what I loved and that's how I genuinely felt at the time for me to be forced out of um almost like a, it I was forced out of everything that I'd been building for years and it was just such a spanner in the works and I feel like maybe a lot of people right now can relate to what I'm saying because we're all being forced into a situation that we don't like that we hate and we can't wait to get back to normality but for me I knew that that wasn't going to happen so I had to adjust and fortunately for me I had a lot of confidence not only not having a leg at that point because I didn't have a prosthetic leg when I went back to university <clears throat> but um I was in a wheelchair and again being surrounded by all these beautiful people and students and people that I would be walking amongst um you know the year before was a hard transition but I got through it and I graduated like I said um with just a lot of determination but with that you know did I was very insecure at some points of um my recovery because everything had to change for me I couldn't go back to work um and like I said I worked in retail I absolutely loved it I worked at Hugo Boss um and it didn't feel like work for me because all the people that I worked with were like family and it was just it was just such an amazing environment to be in I would go to work I would do my studies I would be surround my whole life was fashion and image so you can imagine um obviously having something missing that I was never ever going to get back that was never going to be able to wear you know certain things ever again because footwear makes an outfit and for me not to be able to wear certain things um was really really hard but um I got through it and it was just because I was really determined I was I almost something clicked in me one day because when I actually did get a prosthetic leg I'm going to show you what I wore so this was my first ever prosthetic leg and at first I had it covered um no sorry I didn't have it covered I had it exposed so the full metal was on show and I was just really, really insecure. I thought I could not do this. So I went back to um, my prosthetist and just said, is there any way we can hide all this? I just basically just wanted to hide. And he said, yeah, no problem. Um, these are basically off the shelf skin and you pick your shade like you would at a hairdresser's going to pick a color from a wheel. <laughs> um, so that's what I did. I picked this. Um, and wasn't very smart really because when I got a tan I went darker than the leg so it wasn't a good look anyway but for one like I said I was trying to hide if you could feel the weight the weight of this leg it's genuinely like weight <laughs> you could actually work out with this thing and I wore this for a whole year sweating just getting sores and and it just goes to show if you hide who you are it's painful and if you don't accept yourself for just being you, it will hurt. And that's exactly what I learned. And it wasn't good. And when I came to having my second leg made, I just remember saying to him, don't cover it. I'm done. I can't do this. It was just annoying. And I thought to myself, you have overcome death <laughs> pretty much. You had a very close encounter with nearly not being here. And... I couldn't accept this and I just thought no don't do it to yourself so like I said I went back to him and I was just like let's just have some fun with this now and I had my green leg made um, I call it the green leg um, I basically had a mini paceman car at the time that was um, I think it was called jungle green <laughs> and I said to him let's make it jungle green so this is oh, I'll show you and then this was it. This, I, I don't wear this leg anymore, but I keep this for memories <laughs> because it was honestly such a point in my life where I just turned things around. 
everything then to me became clear it was like I was walking around for over a year with these coated glasses that were just not very clear and I was as you can imagine I was it's just so hard to explain I need to write a book one day because I, I think I'll be able to articulate it better than what I can say it um but yeah so this for me was just a turning point and I look at it and think yeah yeah you, you did that <laughs> and there's not many things in life you can say that you did so well at and I can honestly say I'm just so proud of myself that I was able to um push forward and own it and just be me and um and I don't think people say that enough about themselves like you look at something and think damn I did that like amazing well done me like people you need to say that more <laughs> honestly um because that changed my life and that's what I'm trying to say and show you and talk to you about and educate because honestly if you just not only it's almost like self-acceptance is so huge and people can talk a load of talk but they actually don't follow their own advice they can sit and give advice to everyone and like i've seen it i i know some people that are not the people that they preach and i know some people and it's not nice when you actually know that that's not what they actually are feeling and but yet people are thriving off things that they're preaching and that's not right so i knew i couldn't start a charity i couldn't give my full self and give my authentic self to to people that needed me to be that person and i fully wasn't accepting of myself so um yeah once I got over that like cloudiness I was off so I set up a charity I started to do photo shoots I started to do a bit of modeling I were I, I don't know what it was it was just like someone just lit a fire and I was like <laughs> and and I look back and even at photos and I just I just go yes like I'm so so happy that I was able to do that and um even sitting here talking and i know i'm talking to you but i'm all i can see is a camera and a ring light <laughs> but i really really hope that me just telling you that little bit of a story might help you in some way might um might <laughs> it sounds so cringe but light a fire in you honestly because it's it's changed my life it's changed my life and i would hate for people to have this almost like kind of knowledge and not pass it forward oh my god what the hell is wrong with me oh jesus it, that's why this happened to me i know it everything happens for a reason so many people walked down that street that day but it would happen to me and I, I know that's why so um honestly self-belief is huge 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 and it can change you and it can change your life and if you've if you need a book to read the secret is the one for me <laughs> the secret is the one <clears throat> along with katie piper's um book beautiful you need those two books they're the books i swear by and reading them I actually read The Secret before I went to New York and the, the statement like your thoughts your thoughts become things it's huge because they do even when I was starting this YouTube channel you don't even understand how much anxiety I had I was like I can't do this I'd watch YouTube for years and years and years mainly beauty things um I never thought that I'd then be sat in front of a camera like chatting or showing you my house or showing you the clothes I like or anything like that I don't do it I just do it because I enjoy it so um but yeah I'm gonna um wrap this video up right now 
before I'm a blubbering mess. You know, when I actually had this video in mind, I didn't think I'd be crying on camera, so I do, do really apologise. It's just because I'm, when you're really passionate about something and you... <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna go again, that would need to stop. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna finish that sentence, but when you're passionate about something and you, sometimes I can't articulate things the way that I actually feel, sometimes that's really frustrating but I'm like oh my god anyone can do absolutely anything I swear um but it's hard I I really do need to write a book <laughs> but yeah um on that note I'm gonna leave it there because I'm gonna go to bed and I really hope that everybody is okay and everybody is adjusting to their new normal hopefully it won't be for long and we can all hug our loved ones. That's all I just want to do. I'm just like, I just want to hug everyone. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> it's a funny whole time. You know, I've, it was funny because I did have a bit of a cry when it all happened because I am not a believer in making plans. Like I don't, as you can imagine, my life was flipped upside down. I didn't mean to sound like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air then, but I did. <laughs> but it was. Um, it was flipped upside down out of my control out of my hands and i felt like i'd made plans for the whole entire year and then it was almost like the universe again saying ha you do not make plans i've told you this before and i i just broke down to my mum on facetime like oh, it's happening again like like i've just done now <laughs> pretty much but yeah i just thought sean you know this you know not to make that many plans and I learnt again. So I hope everyone is learning with each other and we can all learn from each other and show each other love. There's not enough of that, especially on the internet. Show each other love and I'm gonna leave it there. That's it. I'm sorry about the crying, but I'm a real human being with emotions <laughs> that clearly I need to speak to somebody about. <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope you like this video and I hope it's helped in some way shape or form um and yeah that's it I'm gonna live and leave you and I will see you in my next video